Ci combina nada. Ci combina tão ali. Que me sente que não tem nada. É tempo. They're answering you with you're not fit to wear the shirt. That's what they think of this England side. Starting to kind of feel like Euro 96 genuinely might be as good as it gets in our lifetime. 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 I mean, I mean, I mean. To be honest, the the, uh, the pundits on the television can't get their head around the ABBA system. No, so that, I mean, I well, don't know what the players. Well, they're Peter, even dafter, aren't they? When when the ABBA system uh, first came to to light, I thought, Mamma Mia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Really? I've had that my room, one. That room one. <laughs> <laughs> the winner takes it all. <laughs> Welcome back to the Football Ramble, everybody. It's been a long summer. Can I just say, I've, I've missed you. The, Ab- the Abba Penalty Shootout thing is, is I just wanted mm. to bring it, this back into focus because it's, it's part of my working theory and it happened with goal yeah, on technology yeah. mm. and it will no doubt happen with uh, video assistant referees. We won't get into that can of worms yeah, now. But, but It must be funny. But the, the point is, because the broadcasting community in football generally is, you know, and pro- possibly present company included, <laughs> a bit thick, <laughs> <laughs> everything seems ten times more complicated than oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the fact is you get, yeah, if you're going to roll out, and I've got no personal beef with either of these guys but if you're going to roll out Chris Sutton and Mark Lawrence right I mean can't learn won't learn yeah. it's going to sound a lot more complicated than it uh, actually Mark, is Mark Lawrence is thinking about Thibaut Courtois well when you think uh, about it goalkeepers should take penalties more because they kick more they don't yeah. kick more than the players yeah. that can only use their feet do they Mark <laughs> you haven't really Chris thought about this who do you think is going to win Chris Sutton oh, well I just thought that, 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 that Cthulhu just takes us all just <laughs> <laughs> just, just concentrate on the game, Chris. Just let yeah. us know the grim, the grim Reaper for me. That's how I'd like to see He'll win. He'll always this. win in the end. It's that sort of Mike Lawrence and insult which gave him a six-month managerial stint at Oxford United in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. solved all of Newcastle's defensive problems yeah, when he's defensive coach. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. to be he, fair, he that... hated Newcastle for a long time after that. Great appointment. <laughs> Great appointment. <laughs> that, that's Mission Impossible. Yeah. Well, bring back the Messiah. I that's did what think I when I saw Sutton and Lawrence, and I thought, oh, come on, I was looking forward mm. to the season. <laughs> That's an early dampler, dampler <laughs> rather. Um, yeah. Is this the BBC sort of like just kicking off at the whole wage thing? Uh, right. Maybe. If, if going, you're angry yeah. at us, we're, we're going to make this very unpleasant for you. <laughs> if you want us to undercut the market, that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are, you suggesting, are you suggesting that Soccer Emma finally put together a banter missile that could reach the mainland? I think so, yeah. <laughs> it could hit Miami. <laughs> Ma- mainland banter land. <laughs> there we are. Anyway, speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen... Back due to overwhelming popular demand. Lord. It's back. It's going for gold, for ladies the, and gentlemen. For the 2017 2018 vintage. Oh. You've even recycled the going for gold um, live theatre show jingle. I know. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready to play? I guess I need to kind of reset and explain the yeah. admin, really. You, wanna, yeah. you give people the, the, the skinny on what it is. Basically, I read out a set of clues pertaining to a mystery footballer, and you guys have to buzz in hmm. and tell me who it is before I get to the end of my clues. And it's yeah. as simple as an unalloyed as that. It's one guess per clue each. You can't, mm, yeah. you can't, you've got to be disciplined on it. Yeah, and you've got to say stop. Yeah, you've got to say stop. And whoever says stop first gets to guess first. <laughs> I'll tell right? you what, the, the people were, were wanting this back, and it is. There but people love playing along at home, so cool strap yourselves in, listeners. Yeah. All right. Right. You ready? Yeah. Yep. Win the win by the win by Lord. I am a Champions League winner. Stop. Is it Clarence Seedorf? <laughs> no, it's not Clarence Seedorf. <laughs> Stop Jimmy Traore. It's Jimmy Traore. Oh, fuck you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you in your fat face. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed Gold for Gold. <laughs> Lord. Unbelievable, right? You can, have the, you can have the rest of the... Oh, no. Rest of the... For fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> fuck! 
<laughs> me. <laughs> to be fair, Pete, he's the he's like the known sort of obscure Champions League winner. People are going, oh, Jimmy Traore. Well, won you the know Champions what will be next week now, don't you? Jimmy Traore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that had two. Jimmy Bellardio. <laughs> If Rafa goes, what do you think? Is that enough experience? Steve for the Watson job? played every uh, position on the pitch back in the day, apart from goalkeeper. I think. Did he not? Uh, did he oh not? no! Wait, no. It might be centre back. He didn't play. One of the positions he didn't play. I think he had a little stint. I think in he goal. did have a stint and goal. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can, can I fast funny. forward you guys just to just because I want to get Pete's opinion on it? Oh, <laughs> the quote of the summer. Here we go from the aforementioned Mike Ashley, yep. who we talked about. Um, oh, well, listen, this this will tell you exactly what he is in fact spending his money on. Um, he said, uh, "I'll just read the quote." I'll okay. Quote. Right. My thing is not to drink regularly. <laughs> it is binge drinking. I am trying to get drunk. <laughs> And he also described himself as a power drinker. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's yeah. like You're amazing. You forget the context. It was in a court of law. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it was referencing, it referencing a, a business meeting which he had to excuse himself from the table uh, in a pub yeah. and uh, vomit in the fireplace. <laughs> Didn't he so, well, well? This is the stuff he's, he's happy to talk about. <laughs> oh, right. Well, what's he, <laughs> imagine, what's he covering up? Leaving out? In yeah. front of the law. What's he covering up? To be honest, mon- <laughs> Monday through, like, Sunday through Thursday, I don't drink at all, but Friday, Saturday, I'm very much in the Ashley camp. You're a power drinker. I'm yeah. a power drinker. <laughs> Yeah. Me Sing and him, him in the whoa, we love you, that. Um, yeah. <laughs> talk, it, talk it out. Thrash out some business deals. Yeah, thrash out. <laughs> <laughs> one of you later forgets agreeing to. <laughs> Vomit in you. Vomit in the fireplace. I've bought a human size fidget spinner to play in defence. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Before you know it, you're the voice of Sports Direct Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, minions. Keep working. <laughs> If indeed you are working today, yeah. zero hours. Oh, it is binge drinking. I'm trying to get drunk. Yeah. Trying. Yeah. In his 40s, isn't he? He's succeeding. In his 40s or his 50s? I, I mean, know. yeah. Something like that. It won't matter if he carries on like that. No, it My won't. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> and it's unlike the Rangers fans to act a little bit silly yeah. in response. Eh? It's all about how you respond to things lots in life, of, I find. Lots of people who listen to this show are always like, we ain't talk about Scotland. Make us talk about it. Mm. <laughs> you have done now. For all the right, wrong yeah. reasons. But I, I partic- <laughs> the highlight for me was the, um, the St Johnston Motherwell game. Yeah. It was 4-1 to, to St Johnston. Mark McGee's former club I mean, Motherwell. I mean, this game... <laughs> I would implore you can watch the extent, a decent, well, I'll say extended highlights. I mean, it's impossible to leave anything out. Well, there was five goals. Yeah, on the BBC website, there's highlights of it. It runs to about five or six minutes. The game was utterly amazing, right? I've got a little <laughs> praise of it here. So St Johnston went ahead with the world's shittest goal, yep. right, straight away. So you, uh, you know you're fully anchored in Scottish <laughs> football and that. Right, that's where I'm Naughty. watching it. Um, and they doubled their lead with a nice goal, but the defending was poor. Then the world get back into it with a goal from a set piece. And you think, OK, this is a, this is a good game. It's 2-1, mm. you know, mm-hmm. this happened. Second half, it goes absolutely <laughs> mad, right? <laughs> Trevor, Trevor Carson, who used to play for Portsmouth, literally picks up the ball outside his area. <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's a, ball, it's, a, it's a through ball played. Trevor Carson thinks, well, I'm not, I'm not going to get to that. Mm. So rather than just sort of slide in and, and do like a, a defender's type tackle, just yeah. picks the ball up. So <laughs> he's off. Yeah, that's right. It. So he, get, he gets sent off. Yep. Motherwell refused to defend again and, uh-huh. and just let St Johnson in. He, he, he scores and. And then, and then, um, McHugh, who, in the same way that Chelsea reacted badly to their red card, mm. McHugh for, um, for the, for the well, <laughs> he, he, he's on a yellow anyway. Yeah. And he throws a huge assault <laughs> on the St. Johnson player. So, so he walks. As he walks, one of the St. Johnson players is pointing at him and laughing. Right? So that, that's the type of game it is. Yep. Um, the, the, by the way, I'm Steve, there, like, Steve Robson's it. going mad as well. And the best thing is that the piece de resistance, right, is Charles Dunn commits a, pro- a professional foul mm-hmm. and he's sent off again. So my well down to eight. eight yeah. yeah, He was sent off midweek <laughs> so, in a different competition. <laughs> it's got all my football. It's like so many it's, red cards. And then, and then they get a penalty, St. Johnson. Yeah. The keeper, who's let an absolute softy one in earlier, mm. saves the penalty and then, um, mother, and then they score a fourth anyway. So that's it. There we yeah. are. So Three four one. red. Four Go one to St Johnson. Motherwell uh, down to th- down to eight men. Those highlights will be on the BBC website. Please watch it. It's brilliant. <laughs> Mark McGee. Jimmy, are you looking forward to anything on the weekend? Lauren Koscielny. <laughs> 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 it's been too long, pal. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. I'm looking for, well, I, I don't, he probably won't play, but uh, if he does, Adnan Yanazai, he signed uh, for Real Sociedad for £8 million. Man United have a buyback clause, you know. Oh, yeah. never burn your bridges. <laughs> it's, it's modern football. Um, Adnan told reporters that he will dedicate his first goal that he scores for Real Sociedad to Louis van Gaal, as they didn't get on very well at Old Trafford, and van Gaal basically wanted him out of the club. And I thought, you don't understand how dedications work, really. It's petty. Right? It's petty, isn't yeah. it? If do you do that when you've scored it. Yeah. You know what I mean, you're creating a problem here. <laughs> Rest assured, by the way, if I know anything about Louis van Gaal, he literally no longer knows who Adnan Yanzai is. <laughs> he's well and truly got and rid of him. And to be honest, when, you know, he's going to pass away probably sooner than Yanazai, if, if, if you're ever in for a ghosting, if you're ever in for a spooking, I bet van Gaal's bang up for that. What are you going on about?
What? <laughs> Who would you be? Yeah, you wake up in the middle of the night and a ghostly apparition that is Louis, Louis Van Hal is at the bottom of your bed shouting, Listen to saxophone lady! And then the, the ghost saxophone lady comes in. Oh, it'd be a mess. Do you, um... Can I just finish, finish this off by that saying... That would be a mess. At time of recording, Louis Van Hal is very much alive. Do <laughs> you experience a lot of Dutch ghosts in the night? <laughs> yeah. They kind of do. Oh. Busman's holiday, remember? <laughs> I was just moaning all the time. Yeah. Don't say bus. No, sorry, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, then. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, they treat him normally there, according to, to Jose Mourinho. And they call him Z. I love the fact that he says that they treat him normally when they're opening a road in his honour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's his idea of the, yeah. how he should be treated <laughs> by yeah. everyone all the time. Yeah. Well, so, Cristiano, why did you go back to Mar- Madeira? Another statue, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they bring an island after me. This one, not yet. <laughs> Soon enough. If it was in England, it would be Mourinho Road, wouldn't it? Marina Road, Mourinho Road. You are right, mate? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That is the gist of it. Yeah. yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Don't fight, mate. Yeah. I've been away for too long. Hang I'll, on a I'll minute. I'll have a fight with you if you want. Save oh, it for yeah. Russia next summer, lad. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Come <laughs> so on, mate. It's the national red. There. Imagine that. Imagine wanting to have a fight with someone, but agreeing to put it off for nine months. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of that, there was a guy um, who, back in our home in, my, in our hometown, it's like a sm- pretty small village. Really. Just down Luke Moore Road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was going back there for an unveiling of a road, but no. And we're going down memory lane. Yeah. And no, there was this guy there who used to be a real, like a real wrong one back in the mm. day. He's about, he's about my dad's age. Yeah, now. yeah, but he's here with us now, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> and, uh, no, but he honestly was a real wrong one. And um, my mate said that um, he came up to him in the pub and said to my mate, "Oh, is your dad still knocking about?" And my mate went, "What are you talking about?" He went, "Tell him I'm still looking for him." Won't you? <laughs> I think, it was like some sort of, I think it was like some sort of like argument there, like back in the 70s. So this, is like, this is like in 2004. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's, I respect it. That's one of my mates, so in Edinburgh, he bumped into the old the old secondary school bully. Yeah. Mm. And he was chatting about, I mean, this is years on. Years yeah. on from, from, you know, 10, 11, 12 years on from, from secondary school. And he said, he saw him, he's like, hey, how are you getting on, pal? Here? I, and they always got on quite well. And yeah. he said, ah, oh, do you need, do, do you need anybody battered or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 28. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a minute. I'll tell you what, I took a right kick in that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who it was. That is quite uh, a Mourinho thing to do. Mourinho would bear a grudge for a very, very long yeah. time. Yeah. There's no question about that. I just can't help but feel that if that guy had been looking for that guy's dad for since the 70s, he would have come across yeah. him by He's now. He's not looking that well, is he? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the only floor. Yeah, that's what fuels him. He doesn't actually want to find him. Oh, he's a problem. I've got terrible cataracts. Can't see a thing. Things on the pitch, it's the same old Arsenal, but it's the same old Wenger as well. There's familiarity breeding contempt. Exactly. Yeah, quite, there's no but, way people will be having the conversation they're thought, having about it after the second game if it wasn't Wenger. I, yeah, thought, Wenger might have, yeah. I thought Wenger might have taken a leaf out of Real Salt Lake coach Mike Petke's uh, book when handing out photos in the press conference. This was prove, absolutely amazing. To prove his, uh, his, his thoughts on the game. Because Wenger does like to say this, that and the other, I didn't see it and this happened. And mm. he was, a, you know, was actually, if you, if, you, uh, if you saw this, ladies and gentlemen, Salt Lake City coach, he handed out photos in a press conference to prove his player was fouled at a crucial moment during the match. Who printed this out for John? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Petka is the guy, long-term listeners of the Ramble. Mm. Do you remember the famous coach? Coach! Oh, was that Whoa! him? That's Mike Petka, because he used to be the coach of the New York Red Bulls. Right, OK. It and was... he was absolutely fuming. <laughs> yeah. in his... I've never seen a manager more angry. And the best thing was he... Um... He printed it out in colour. <laughs> he had, he had it Wasteful. Print... He had it printed out in colour, and he kept saying to his assistant, who was... Brilliantly called Trey. <laughs> Trey, pass, pass these out, Trey. Yeah. Pass these out, Trey. <laughs> Serve them up, Trey. <laughs> on the Trey. On Trey's Trey. He also said at some point, if I do not do what I do, you mean lose my temper, he means, um, I cannot sleep for the next four weeks. <laughs> Trey <laughs> doesn't weeks. lose his temper. Yeah. Well, and is it just simmering the whole time? Yeah. And he also said, I had two more examples of this, but the freaking printer didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Probably run out of credit if he's printing us about all the time. And he finishes the point by saying that he sort of trails off by saying, but the free you printed didn't work, but um we'll get them out to you, don't worry, we'll get them sent to you. <laughs> and, and you can, We're alright, thanks. All the journalists are just like, nah, don't yeah. worry. Well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> at, one, at one point, because he, he's talking about his player getting punished unfairly for, for some particular physical altercation, mm. which he thinks was, was innocuous, and, and one, of the, one of the handouts he gives out and is um, he, he starts going, look at him, look at him, that's a freaking headlock! <laughs> it does! <laughs> he's a headlock! Like, a freaking headlock! <laughs> <laughs> Very WWE. Oh, it's great. I mean, basically, he just came out with like, uh, all those little kind of uh, models of... Uh, 
uh, famous poems that uh, kids make at school. Dioramas. Have you made like a diorama yeah. of the situation, or maybe like made one of those science um, volcanoes? And that's how angry I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's how mad I am. If Pass you, it out. Pass it <laughs> around. If you merge, get your face. If you merge Spurs' uh, the base of Spurs' midfield. It would be a diorama, of course. Would you? Would but, you, um, would you yeah, good. Yeah. Think about that, everybody. Would, no, that was bloody excellent. <laughs> <laughs> You mixed up the word dire and dire. Any more side points? To produce a dire, a Wanyama, did you say? Sorry. You see, you didn't uh, think about it. You see. didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah we are. Get, as get soon, as, soon as you start getting punny, and it's that, I close my ears. Well, my yeah. ears just skin over. Yeah, <laughs> something, something about your system shuts down, doesn't it? Yeah. Is there a firewall for puns in your programming? <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to see Mike, uh, Mike Petka just come into a press conference next week with a massive strip of magnesium. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, guys. <laughs> Blind behind the room. That's how angry I am right now. <laughs> I've been staring at the eclipse for the last yeah. three hours. Oh, I can't see anything. You're all blind anyway. You couldn't see that red card. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great... Blind squirrels are nuts, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, it's a hell of a nut to stumble yeah. upon, isn't yeah. it, though? My goodness, it's not the only uh, honest story we heard on radio uh, recently. I didn't hear this, of course. I read about this. Um, uh, perhaps uh, some of our listeners will be au fait with Happy FM in Ghana. Right. Mm -hmm. A joyous listener, I'm assuming. Um, Well, this was very, very interesting indeed because Alhaji Babagedo, the president of second tier Amadeus Professionals uh, in Ghana, again, a team that uh, we're all very Mm. familiar with. It's a great name for a team. He was discussing um, some refereeing standards and whatnot. And refereeing standards will always be discussed no matter what league you go, no matter which country, so on and so forth. And and then he was a man who, as I say, he's a president of a second tier side. So he's got a bit standing in the game, a bit of importance, and you think I, I wonder I what... I sense you might be building up the same game, mate. <laughs> I used to pay countless fat bribes to referees. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Not just skinny ones, fat bribes. Let me put, fat let bribes. put my seatbelt on. <laughs> now I'm ready. <laughs> but I've stopped now. That's uh, good. Yeah, fair enough. Because I didn't benefit from it. Oh, well, right. well, Okay. You sort of popped yourself on the moral well, high is, ground. Has he, then... he found that other people are bribing more? <laughs> Well, he went on to say, you pay the bribe and the referee will still go ahead and rob you, which means he also collected a bribe from your opponents. That's what pissed me off. You've got no cause to complain. Yeah, he, no. was on, he occupied the moral high ground and went tumbling back into the no, valley. No, he didn't occupy the moral high ground. <laughs> he, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah he did. come on. He's, His he's, opening gambit is, yeah. I used to pay them fat yeah, bribes, yeah. yeah. But clearly other pl- other teams paid them uh, fatter yeah. bribes. I'd like, yeah, but I'd like to know what world you're living in, Marcus, where owning up to a, an actual crime is occupying yeah. the moral high the, ground. The best you can offer is that he's been honest, but he's only being honest about his own dishonesty yeah, yeah that's because he's nowhere for him to go because it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> and it's pissed him off yeah. <laughs> what am I to do yeah. more of this guy oh, I feel not sorry for him no my goodness yeah well that's uh uh, are doing uh, this year. Uh, Portugal beat Hungary 1 0 away. I was in Hungary over the weekend and I visited one of the most beautiful stadiums I've ever been to. Which one? The Pancho Arena. Ah. Um, but it's such a shame because if you read up about the Pancho Arena, it's uh, it's not for, for nice reading, especially if you're a Hungarian citizen. Have you, do you know Viktor Orban? No. Who's the, who's the, Enlighten us. No, he's the. He's the, he's the the leader of Hungary, right. it's more accurate to say, okay. shall we say. And the, how this stadium was financed has been come into question. So is this a new stadium? It's, a, it's about two years old, right. I think. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very small stadium. It's only about 3,500, hmm. uh, which uh, is double the population of the village it's in. Oh, dear. Happen, Happens to be the village where he's from. <laughs> Just put a statue up. <laughs> wow. Honestly, the, the, the house that he owns uh, in this village, it is a stone throw. In fact, it's, it's pissing, di- literally it's pissing. It's the stadium distance. just in his garden. Pretty much. <laughs> it's absolutely shocking. It's well worth a read if wow. you're into Has your... he got deep pockets? Let's move on. <laughs> um, I, I, I've got an email about this, actually. Oh, have you? From uh, Jimmy Allen. Hello, Jimmy Allen. He says, Hello, Ramblers. This weekend I was in the beautiful city of Budapest for a ah. friend Stag Do. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oi, oi. Ed's on. A lovely time was had by all. And to top it off, I got to see Matt. Man of the people, he puts in inverted commas, an all-round <laughs> good guy, Marcus Speller, tucking into some pre-flight grub. Yeah, that would have happened. Eating. Yeah. Yeah. Can I speculate as to what you were eating? Yeah, uh, I'm trying uh, to remember. All day breakfast, no cuppa, orange Fanta, <laughs> no ingredients you couldn't buy in an off license. Yeah, no sauce. <laughs> In, Absolutely. Within the M25. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> barely right? any moisture involved at all. <laughs> Luton's outside the M25. Okay. Is he saying on the way in or the way out? Well, I think it's on the way out. But basically, what well, I'd on like the way to... out, there's no all day breakfast in Budapest. Yeah, but I My reckon goodness, you would have taken the sausages do? with you. Yeah, to have sausage- egg. they got fine sausages over there. <laughs> well, so you just take a string of sausages with you to the airport <laughs> no. like a cartoon dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> he says, what I'd like to know is, uh, was I correct telling my friends that it's rude to go and speak to somebody while they're halfway through a meal, as I had to battle the urge to make the great man himself with my awkward slash polite Britishness? Was great in inverted commas as well. <laughs> <laughs> he bottled it, basically, uh, which my friends all thought was hilarious. If you see me pissed up on the continent, stay away. Come on. No, no, come, <laughs> come on, on, on. Come on. Um, no, <laughs> of course you could have come and said yeah. hello. He says, what were you doing in Budapest alone and on an international weekend? I was visiting the Pancho Arena. There we go. I got an invite from Victor Orban. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus can go where he wants. And yeah. a big... <laughs> foot more <laughs> That's libelous. Let's move on again. Oh, yeah, sorry. Greece <laughs> one, Belgium two. <laughs> I love that you've literally taken over the hunting <laughs> duties now <laughs> to get away from this. <laughs> the Belgians are there. Yeah, the, Belgians are there. Like, ugh, the Belgians are there. The Belgians are... Oh, Marcus, Marcus, can Pete be you for a bit? I was enjoying yeah. it. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm still struggling to remember what I was eating. That's an, Oh, it was a slice of pizza. Good. There we are. Yes, it was, <laughs> yeah. Meat feast. Uh, right, the Belgians are there. They Sausage beat feast. <laughs> <laughs> Picked out all the veggie bits. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Didn't have the dip. <laughs> <laughs> it's technically a meal accoutrement, and I'm not getting involved. <laughs> what do you mean you don't put gravy on a pizza? <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, dear. And if he gets a, a chance to shoot, he should have a pop. Who, who, <laughs> <laughs> who are the, some of the German players that we're going to be coming up against, Mark? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. We can talk about some of these players, and I think, Ashley Young, you know, yeah, Man United managers have seen a bit of him. And... Do you know what I'm going to do? Can give you... me a list of the German names, and okay. I'll give you a reason why England shouldn't be scared of them. Yeah, well, these, these are a handful of uh, names from the Germany squad to put England's squad in perspective. Uh, Ike Gundogan. Can't get in the City team. <laughs> Carry on, next. Under Southgate wouldn't be in the side. Emery Chan. Plays in front of the back four for a Liverpool side that have already conceded 17 goals this season. Tony Cruz. Uh, was recently in a team beaten by Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> also ill. I yeah, think. yeah. Oh, is he? Apparently so. Oh, he's, yeah, he's not got the stomach for it, Jim. No, exactly. Um, Sammy Kadira. Plays for a team that struggled to beat Benevento, the worst team in Serie A history last week. But they did beat him. Struggled. And he's won the World Cup. Next. <laughs> Mesut <laughs> Ozil. Ha 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 World Cup uh, finalist, goal scorer, Mario Goetze. Bombed out of Bayern Munich <laughs> and uh, once got a stiffy in public. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, look it up. You no, see yeah. it, Jim, you? Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to specifically look it up. Just yeah. Google him. <laughs> yeah. I think Peter Beagree got one as well. There we go. The He's not in the German squad, though, is no, he? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Next motorbike. Um, Manchester City starlet Leroy Sané. Okay, I genuinely can't think of a bad thing about him. <laughs> Mats Hummel. Uh, played in a 2 0 defeat to Hoffenheim recently in September. Okay. And uh, looked bad. <laughs> Uh, Jerome Boateng couldn't even cut it at Man City <laughs> <laughs> also injured yeah. All right, well, I don't have to worry about him uh, and Joshua Kimmich also played in that 2-0 defeat to Hoffenheim so yeah. what are you worried about in England? the bag yeah. yeah I'm not doing it with the Brazil team no please don't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would just be disrespectful to yourself if it was against <laughs> <laughs> Can I, can I get involved with uh, a little bit of uh, Neville Southall? No. Go on. No, you can, yeah. Oh, I'm, obsessed, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Big, yeah, big yeah, Nev yeah. on Twitter has been magnificent the last few weeks. Mm. Uh, he loves skeletons. He hates Tories. <laughs> it's just a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful... Uh, the, the, last night, if you're gay, straight, trans or anything else, confusing gay, straight and trans there, uh, you should be able to be what you want, not live a lie without discrimination or prejudice. Somebody replies, what about Tory skeletons? They are none. <laughs> they don't have souls. <laughs> wow. Uh, when, when you look at a person's eyes, you see them really mm. trying. Someone with a million cigarettes struggling along, trying to cope best they can, humans. Uh, and then somebody replies to that, hey, Nev, uh, can you recommend a book on your good self, please? He says, no, mate. He's got his own autobiography. I could recommend one, In Search of Perfection. I told you all about it before. Mm. Big Nev signed it for me once. It, it, is that um, is it, Big is Nev's it, autobiography? It's, it's half, no, it's half goalkeeping manual, half sort of like his oh, ideas nice. about stuff. And, and also, oh, um, no has Neville tweeted much about how he tried to sue his own daughter? <laughs> no, he, did, he does not tweet <laughs> not about that, that. No, okay, no. Well, he did, well the thing that sort of kicked off, October well, the I mean, 3rd... That is something that literally happened. I know, well, but yeah, people, but look, people look. need the chance to be able to redeem themselves. And he Come has on. redeemed himself. October the 3rd, the, the start of this skeleton nonsense, uh, was all from this tweet saying, I love the thought of recycled skeletons. Imagine walking down your street and all your dead relatives were lampposts. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I can't sue a skeleton, though, can he? No. <laughs> A football legend has sued his 19-year-old daughter to get back £55,000 oh, worth of trophies. That was ages saying. ago. October 6th, two crows sitting on a tree above a graveyard. One says to the other, where's them effing skeletons? <laughs> I am devastated. I idolise my dad. I don't know how I'll pay the cost. October 5th, skeletons have arms, legs and back make ideal chairs. <laughs>
Why is it such a skeleton? Why is it such a skeleton? He's got full it. Jeremy Bentham. Well, I love it. I really appreciate this, Luke. Is when Pete actually finds something that he's positive yeah, about, yeah, you, you just tear it down. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never, <laughs> Never no South Falls. October 5th, later in the day. Uh, imagine skeletons, handlebars on your motorbike made from arms. <laughs> this, is, this is bizarre. Breaking stuff. would be so easy and fun. Oh dear. Right, I ladies love, and gentlemen. I just love Never South Falls. Thank you very much we for listening. We found something you do like, and that's yeah. important. Tactics. Well, I was about to say, Pete's threshold for, um, for sh- shocking behaviour is a lot higher than other people. <laughs> it so. is, yeah. yeah. I'm very forgiving. Mm. Yeah, you are. Indeed, yes. Mm. Shall we go to Brazil, gentlemen? Fancy it. Well, I'm a bit jet lagged already, to be honest. Mate, <laughs> yeah, but just got I'll, back. I know, jeez. On the, on the, the continent where we'd have a little bit of reggaeton, Peter. Right? <laughs> Peter should have gone straight there. He the old gone... samba spirit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? The, the old sambles. Get your, uh, get your sambas on. Um, Ibis Sport from the northeast of the country, or Ibis Sport. Or the, I'll say Ibis, otherwise it sounds silly. Um, from my the hotel brand. <laughs> That's Ibis, yeah. Ibis. Um, they're, they're from the northeast of uh, Brazil. They play in the lowest division of the Pernambuco. Championship and are self dubbed the worst team in the world. This was a piece in The Guardian, very interesting indeed. They were officially crowned the worst team in the world after going three years and 11 months without winning a match in the 80s, which is, which is quite uh, spectacular. They're deeply concerned at the moment, though, as the side have won three in a row. It could have been four. I couldn't find their result on Sunday, funnily enough. The Pernambuco uh, Championship doesn't rank high on the Google search uh, <laughs> engine. But, uh, so they've won three in a row. Could have been four, but definitely three in a row. And, and the fans feel this is ruining their identity. <laughs> now, Pete Donaldson, if this is not the team for you, you I yeah. don't know what is. <laughs> Die-hard Ibis sport fan. Right yeah. up my street. This yeah. is right, right up my straws. I'll tell you what, if there's a successful takeover in Newcastle, he's going to Ibis sport. It's, like, right. it's like when um, when the Glazers took over at United <laughs> and all those fans started supporting FC United. Yeah. This Manchester. is your FC United, Peter. Yeah. That's my feeder club. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Well, after the team um, won their third straight match, fans piled into a bar where the players were having a drink to celebrate the win and the fans asked them to stop winning. Yeah. <laughs> One fan said, this is destroying our history. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, this is what you all right. they go to the football for? What I don't know. The joy? I don't know. To enjoy the opposition, presumably. Yeah, yeah presumably, exactly. Yeah. Well, other fans went on social media to complain. They are from the northeast. I mean, <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, I, I like this. It's, your interest is peaked, isn't it? Yeah. I can tell. What's, what does the kit look like? <laughs> one of uh, one of the major airport. One of, one of the fans complained on social media, saying, "This is a worrying situation in the long term. To stop being an icon and to just be another winning team, it's the coach's fault." <laughs> Doing his job. Love it. <laughs> doing his job. <laughs> uh, and this is great. A former player for them, a midfielder called Maro Shampoo. That has to be a nickname. Have you seen a picture of Maro Shampoo? Well, hence the nickname. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it is a magnificent Wait, it's, Oh, it's perm. a nickname. He's their conditioning oh. coach, I think. Hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> he boasts that he only scored one goal in 10 years and said this winning is bad for the team's brand. I, I think if he gets to... Something's come along and burst <laughs> our bubble. I think he could... Um, I think he could really shine if he was giving a bit of chance. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, I expected more from you, what? rather than just a shampoo song being Well, at the song. moment, Luke, it's damage Sorry, repair, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it is damage repair, <laughs> I'll yeah. let you get all of you shower of shit. Really shit. <laughs> what are you what? talking about? Shower of shit. You have to let yourself down, boy. Shower. <sighs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. I do get it. <laughs> it's not a pun, though, is it? It's just just saying you shower get... of shit. I'm just, say, I'm just letting you get on with your shower of shit. <laughs> OK, thanks, right. mate. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Defenders don't know how to defend against tall players in 2017, so no. Duncan Ferguson might probably do do something. There we are. That's all I'm saying. In 2027, they might not either. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, we we mentioned Everton in the Europa League. Of course, they they played um, Leon at Goodison Park. Didn't get a very good result there. The, the Everton fan who punched uh, a Leon player while holding his three year old son. Some of you would have seen this. Uh, with with the big melee that happened when uh, Ash, um, Ashley Williams got involved and it's, it's it was all a bit silly and there was a bit of a brawl and some of the fans came down and stuff. I never knew something could be so funny and so depressing at the same time. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. It is one of those ones, well, the, the, the Everton fan who did punch a Leon player and that, that did happen, sadly. Uh, he said he was ashamed of what he did. And then he went on to say that he was angry with the club security because they let him, him do it. Yeah, and the others get <laughs> so, so close. Look what to you made me do. Um, he was also angry with the players themselves because, in his words, they're supposed to be an example. Now this is a man. <laughs> this is a man who punched a fellow human being while holding his three-year-old son. And he's accusing other people of setting a good probably, example. Probably blames his son for not being able to follow up with the left. <laughs> yeah. 
They should, they I would have followed up with a left. You better set a good example. <laughs> yeah. They should be giving them my wages. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of respect I got for them. Oh, like, what? Oh, dear, man. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was uh, not the uh, sharpest tool in the shed, and, and mm-hmm. also it, very, as I said earlier, very, very depressing mm. to see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does, does his son get banned? Because he's been banned. Does oh, his yeah. son get? Well, his son involved. didn't actually throw a punch. Did no. He? So hopefully, the, hopefully they'll see sense. Yeah, but he was a counterweight to the pivot. I would say <laughs> scandal as three-year-old banned from football. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! Well, absolutely. That's that's what I uh, that's what I question myself. It almost feels like um, this is more suited to what happens in the third season of um, of Mourinho, the TV show. You I was out. I, mean? I, I was out of the police station inside half an hour with my solicitor, <laughs> but I'm ashamed of what I've done. I already know. I'm not a fucking dickhead. <laughs> We're back to the Everton. Yeah. Band. Why not? Why not? I was getting bored of that fun. Mourinho stuff. I knew I'd put myself and my son in a dangerous position. <laughs> it was not intentional, but I'd been too concentrated on screaming abuse at the players for being shit. <laughs> is, this, is this better or worse than the Newcastle van punching the police horse? Pete. Can, can, suppo- we, can we have a marks out an idiot? They're please? supposed to be setting an example. They're professional athletes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think John Terry still got that Dad of the Year award? Because I know he deserves it. Maybe more on John later, of course. Um, but Cantona we... run off the pitch and gave a fan a kung fu kick in the chest. Yeah, I'm the worst thing in football. Are they deluded? <laughs> Who's interviewing this man? Yeah. Fantastic. It doesn't look the best on video. <laughs> that was his final quote. Wow. Yeah. Because he, yeah, he claims he was sort of caught in a surge, wasn't he? Yeah. He basically, oh, my fist just sort of got caught up in the current. <laughs> Sorry about that, Huddersfield fans. That's but, all right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought oh, maybe I'll just give one quote on that. And we'll move on. But no, no. ramble will prevail, it ladies will. and gentlemen, and, and so it should. So I apologise there. Uh, but yeah, if I... I'll tell you, another team who's doing doing quite well in the championship at the moment is um, is Sunderland. <laughs> <laughs> But every time I do the highlights of the week thing out on the Facebook, <laughs> I just get a load of Sunderland fans going, "Oh, we didn't win again." I do. I mean, they threw away. People, I, do, I, I do forget how many people listen to the football ramble who just bought Sunderland. I go, "What? What? Are you? Why?" Yeah, they drew there's away for you. They drew away. Uh, Pete. No, there's plenty for them. <laughs> yeah, but if you do stop listening, away. please do a, download a, a dirty so plastic <laughs> Jordy and, and, and news from the championship. That's all you get. Um, by the way, um, <laughs> three draws in the row for Sunderland now. Um, which if they carry on like this and draw every game for the rest of the season, they'll still get relegated. Yeah. So. It's a platform to build on. Yeah. A platform that has a trapdoor in it. And will collapse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Independently of the trapdoor. Yeah. Will Dick Advocate go back there and save the day? Will he? Will he not? <laughs> no. Again, you answers on a No, he won't. <laughs> His name's not Willie, it's Dick. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Willie Advocate. Um, <laughs> the worst Christmas drink. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, Grandmama, come downstairs. There's some Willy Africa <laughs> on the side for you. Mother. Season's greetings. <laughs> I brought it in from the courtyard. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great impression of uh, people from Sunderland there. Yeah, I know. Um, I think that's a fantastic championship round at that, that chap. Did, did, uh, <laughs> correspondence with Peter Donaldson. It is time for correspondence with Peter Donaldson. That's my name. Do wear it out. Hello, Zane <laughs> Pritchard. Uh, hello there, Ramblers. Apologies if I've missed the boat with this, but I'd like to allude back to your chat. Can you allude back to a chat uh, about games being stopped for peculiar reasons? Sky Sports News uh, ran a story a few weeks ago about a game that was taking place in the lower leagues of France. Uh, the pitch was uh, located directly next to an elderly woman's house. And during the game, the ball kept on being kicked over into her garden. Uh, she, give, she became so frustrated at having to throw the ball back over time and time again, uh, so she decided to take matters into her own, her own hands. She proceeded to march onto the pitch with a plastic garden chair and take a seat on the halfway line <laughs> so the teams could no longer play, resulting in the game being abandoned. Well, just get rid of it, just move her off. You can't physically... Rest- lift, her up, lift her up in the chair. Well, you're restraining a woman. Uh. But you, of course you can move, so that's a life ban. <laughs> yeah. Is that a garden? Yeah, so that's a life ban, and it's a, it's a, it's a, poli- it's a steward's matter or a police matter, and, and get rid of it. I, I, I just say... think it's a beautifully rustic scene. Like, sort of they se- went down to the boulangerie and enjoyed some <laughs> What sort of security fromage. is there in that game? <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, I, didn't you say, like, f- French fourth tier or something? Yeah. I thought you, Probably I thought just you, a school field, to be fair. I thought you were going to say that they pulled it, she pulled out a knife and was just popping the ball. Yeah, I was a bit <laughs> yeah, worried. That's what I was thinking, yeah. people used to do that down my street. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if your football went into a certain someone's back garden, yeah. they would mm. pop it. Yeah, I remember I, my dad having a set two with a guy down the road because he wouldn't give our <laughs> footballs back. My was, dad went down there and challenged him. Yeah, <laughs> challenged him to a knife off. A duel, a, yeah, a, a knife duel. Yeah, there was oh a, there was goodness. a guy who used no, to not, there was no knives involved. <laughs> There was a guy who lived next to me who was only too keen for you to walk through the house to get the ball. Oh, uh, so, <laughs> I mean, carry a knife for a different reason. That's what I would say. Was it the, can- um, the canoe man? It wasn't the canoe man. No. The canoodling man. Um, hello to uh, Stephen. 
Uh, hello, Lou Brazil. Um, well, we're always uh, keen to hear from friends. Uh, we're keen to hear from Billy Friendo. Ah, Billy Friendo. Is that in, his name? Uh, he has in, to be in, Australian. In Sydney, Australia. It sounds like an eighties yeah. chocolate bar. Billy <laughs> Friendo, get yourself a Friendo. Yeah, full of a lattice of chocolate and nuts. A Friendo. Is that um, what the guy used to say in your house? We're getting the bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> you got a friendo. <laughs> it's under hey, the sofa. Hey, friendo, calm down. <laughs> it's no, no biggie. No need to call mum and dad. It's no biggie. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal Palace. <laughs> so now they officially are rubbish again. Yay. I can't like the name Gary Hours. If yeah. you, if you uh, were, if you sacked your manager and your team was accused of being lazy and you'd, you'd come out and go, don't worry, we're putting in the yeah, hours. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few like more. One, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. This one, this these these this one particularly is, is fantastic. Ben Bennett said, uh, "My heart of the weekend is at the QPR financial fair play hearing. Harry Redknapp said <laughs> he only signed in quotes one or two players to get QPR promoted, <laughs> as most of the players on big contracts were already there when they arrived. Those one or two in quotes were." Danny Simpson, Richard Dunn, Carl Henry, Charlie Austin, <laughs> Gary O'Neill, Matt Phillips, Javier Chevanton, Aguchi Inewu, Yossi Benayoun, Cole Donaldson, Aaron Hughes, Ben Morasu Okoto, Tom Carroll, Nico Kranzgaard, <laughs> Della Torre, Kevin Doyle, Will Keane, yeah. Madiba Maiga, and Ravel Morrison. Bear boats. Yeah. Bear <laughs> boats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, the chairman did all the hyperbole. One or two. And <laughs> even if he said a handful or a few... Do you know what I mean? One yeah. or can I can I just squeeze a few? That's made it in. Yeah, very slim pickings. All you got to do is it's, it's the name, isn't it? Yeah, Grimley. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Basically, if you're called like John Smith, you've got no chance. Yeah. Yeah. How you fancy just name. make up a name. Yeah. Yeah. Call it's yourself Stormzy. No one cares. I'll read it. <laughs> yeah. um, Craig Doyle. Hello, Ramblers. I have a pair of Kevin Keegan stories to bring to the banquet. Oh. Pair of them. <laughs> pair of them. Uh, and the first is Keegan's last game for Liverpool before moving to Hamburg in the summer. Liverpool won the league with Keegan having a phenomenal season. However, in Keegan's penultimate game, they lost the FA Cup against Man United 2-1. Four days later, it was the 1977 European Cup final in the Stadio Olimpico Rome and Liverpool were playing against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Keegan runs the game and in the process wins a penalty halved by Scottish disaster Bertie Vaux to make it 3-1 to Liverpool, winning their first European Cup. After the match, Keegan enters the dressing room and says, I have won you the European Cup there, lads, and that's my parting gift. Centre-half Tommy Smith spins around and says, but you're shit on Saturday, and then lamped him. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the celebrations of the win, Keegan is there, but he's wearing a big pair of aviators and a black eye. <laughs> Don't need to hit him, <laughs> Tommy Smith was tough. Tommy Smith was the guy that, um, was it... Um... <laughs> Is it Bill Shankly said about him? He wasn't. He wasn't born. He was quarried. Oh dear! Oh, oh, no, poor no, Keggy. No need to him. No, no, no need to him. He's story just, two. He's just trying to be light, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. This is <laughs> trying to be confident. This is the, that's the support story to the main event. <laughs> <laughs> A second, shorter story in my lifetime. Being a Scottish kid, I actually got the chance to go to Kevin King's Soccer Circus. Oh, yeah. And oh, wow. got to do a bit of head tennis with the great man himself. And while uh -huh. not knowing particularly who he was at the time, apart from knowing he was a former England manager, in doing the challenge after a poor header from myself and a determined Keegan to keep it up, uh, as, in, as we in the high 20s, uh, oh, yeah, we were in the high 20s, sorry. So the, the headers happened, they yeah, got yeah. to over 20, and, and uh, Keegan was Tony determined Blair. to keep it going. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and he fell over and ripped his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for that, Craig Doyle that, in Kevin Keegan's can soccer that be circus. True? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. In many ways, Jim, we've got to the point now where it doesn't actually matter. No, no. Yeah. you can you can make up a story about him, and then it will like happen to him the next week. The thing is, because because Jim, genuinely, the lawsuit can't get any bigger. No, so there's, there's no. And Pete's going to be a, a, a witness for the for the prosecution anyway. So he'd fuck it up, Keegan, yeah. wouldn't he? Uh, he would <laughs> absolutely represent himself. Um, is it, you you use the word? How have I got life for this? <laughs> I was your, a defendant. Your solicitor's on fire, Kegan. <laughs> Kegan. Pete, um, Pete, um, you use the... Yeah, um, it's such a bold kind of mission statement as well. You're yeah. really setting yourself up for a fall. It shows the confidence he had in himself. Yeah, during his time at Manchester United, he won 13 league titles, five FA Cups, four League Cups, two Champions Leagues, one Cup Winners' Cup. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Christmas in the form of the Club World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Food. And the club woke up in a pear tree. <laughs> and the year when they didn't enter the FA Cup. Yeah. Five FA Cups. Oh, done, done, done. <laughs> what are they even four of? League Cups. <laughs> right, let's do this. We're yeah, going right, right, to do it. Right, five FA Cups. I don't know what he won three of. Four League Cups. Uh, he won. Okay, so he won 11 uh, Premier League Manager of the Seasons Award and 27 Manager of the Months Award. All right, that goes so, at the top. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I've got one for two, two Nevilles. Okay, yeah, I like that. Let's go three bottles of red wine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ready? I'm he a... did win two Champions Leagues. We can put the Nevilles in if you want, but I oh. fear that... Uh... I prefer Nevilles. Yeah. I All think right. he would too. Five, Five FA Cups, Cups, four League Cups, three Red Wines, two, 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 two Nevilles, Nevilles, and, and a Scott Nevilles. Yeah, well rehearsed, lads. Yeah. You, you derailed that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was also given a knighthood. Oh, we say that then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just the one, one knighthood. <laughs> <laughs> and a knighthood in and front of the queen. <laughs> and a knighthood from the, the queen. queen. There you go. Right. Mm. There Edit that go. together, Pete. Right. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> a real episode for City fans, <laughs> like, this, isn't it? Whack a, yeah. whack a beat under it. <laughs> Man, City fans are loving this. They've yeah. had their one, though. Yeah, they? Yeah, they have. They're all right. At the, they, at the swamp. They can yeah. just look at the league table. They yeah. must have been thinking to themselves, yeah, take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, go on. Happy Christmas, sir. Happy Christmas, Daniel. Well done, Danny, baby. Yeah. Marvellous stuff. Peter, what? Are you ready to move on to the Premier League? I'm ready Is to it move Roy back the boy? into the Premier League. <sighs> Roy the boy. What's this, Marcus? That's Roy the boy riding again. Here he comes, <laughs> riding again. <laughs> Roy the boy. Absolutely. Wanted alive. Out of the... Out of the... <laughs> <laughs> He's a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> on a steel horse. Out on an eagle he rides. <laughs> Good. And he's wanted. Wanted! Imagine him Specifically riding Specifically a... alive. <laughs> him riding an eagle like Daenerys Targaryen in her dragons. I'll yeah. tell you Roy on the top of it. Can you imagine him in the garb yeah. as well? Oh. And, the, and the plats. Absolutely. Yeah. Charlton fans trying to punch it, can't get near it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, he wants to be a cowboy baby with this kind of performance. They were bloody brilliant. Uh, not. Uh, what have we got? We've got an email from Tony Kale. Oh, go on, Tone. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, Tony, Tony <laughs> Kale. Oh, okay. Tony Kale. Wasn't it? So is that like a vegetarian Tony Gale? <laughs> hey. yeah. Um, I'm not listening, subscribing to this podcast anymore. You've met. I've got some music for this, hang on. <laughs> I'm not listening to or subscribing to this podcast anymore. You've made far, far too many anti Trump comments. <laughs> I ignored the first couple because I enjoyed the show so much. It's absurd since this is a football podcast based in the UK. If I was listening to any other podcast that was US based, then I of course would not be shocked by triggered liberals making comments against President Trump. Believe me, I'm used to the bombardment of lies slash brainwashing that the liberal media spews out. However, I listen to football podcasts like yours to escape that extremely biased media I have to deal with here in the US, but I can't escape it, I guess. It's funny, if it wasn't for Brexit, then I'd worry all the Brits were triggered liberals like you guys. I strongly <laughs> Suggest you keep politics out of your show. Tony Kale there. Uh, Just a chat. Hit me back. Yeah. <laughs> this is Stan. Tony Gale's really gone down. Wow. Tony Gale. Yeah. I can't believe Tony Gale has got time for that. Stuff. Veggie Gale. I know. Unbelievable. <laughs> the great Alex thing is, we, the one thing we do know about email complainers is that he will absolutely listen to this show. <laughs> yeah. So you'll hear that. And probably keep listening. Thank yeah. you for your email, Tony. You weirdo. And, uh, if you want to get involved, he's not a weirdo. Well, he's a weirdo. Show at the footballramble.com <laughs> if you want to get involved. That's show at the footballramble.com. And we can talk about whatever the fuck we want, to be quite frank, Tony. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Bushwhackered around, chucked straight out. Oh, same. Unbelievable. Same principle. Comparable. Same, same. same. Uh, hello, Ramblers. Hope all is well. This is from Sam in London. Uh, basically, I am quite a desperate man, or more specifically, a man desperate for you to read an email I've sent into the show twice already. Desperate Sam. Well, get the message, Sam. <laughs> How's this made in? <laughs> uh, the reason I'm trying one more time is genuinely, I do think you'll enjoy my contribution. <gasps> this is almost oh. get. This could go either way. This could go well, kill. It's, it's this could go down the kill highway. <laughs> this is like this is like when we have a meeting before the show and people try and pitch ideas and we all say no. <laughs> I want to do a rap. Everyone said no. A while back, Marcus began an episode of the show talking about the man who drove Man United and Manchester City's first team coach That's right. during the days of Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. Naturally, uh, you all seemed surprised that such a figure existed, but he did. His name was Derek Sutton. And he was employed by the Manchester coach company, Finglands, which I'm quite enjoying. Yeah, Finglands. Yeah. Finglands. Uh, he also went by the nickname of Sutty. Uh, Sutty became good friends with Ron Atkins, and so much so that he was allowed to sit in the dugout during United's away games. <laughs> and he was there, 
And he was there on November the 8th, 1986, when Atkin- Atkinson's successor, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, took uh, his place in the United dugout for the first time at Oxford United. Ferguson took one look at the portly, bespectacled man who was left and asked, Who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> Upon discovering who Sutty was, Ferguson made it clear to him he would never be allowed to sit in the United dugout again, and he never did. The end. Oh, that's, oh. that's the beginning of the end for Ferguson. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That was his first and most most egregious mistake. <laughs> uh, not Ron's though. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Ron rang him up and said, I told you. You make that sort of decision, you'll never win the trophies I have. Oh, it's a tight yeah. ship under big Ron Atkinson, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, mate, it's so tight, the Man City bus driver is technically sitting in the United <laughs> dugout. When, when people talk about Ferguson taking over the club and eventually turning it around, the way they talk about it like, is, is that you know, the people were just drunk all the time. Yeah. This bus driver yeah. thing. It was, like, it, was like, it was like walking into like a post-apocalyptic yeah. city for the first time. Yeah. Wow. Big, the... big Ron sat there going, yeah. oh, I love the old job. <laughs> The dugout would just be on fire. Yeah. <laughs> you ask yourself, would you have prefer, preferred to play for Manchester United pre or post Ferguson? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget, there's a lot of truth in this because Big Ron once famously sat in the wrong dugout at the start oh, of the yeah, game. Right. Right. Oh, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been at Hill. No, it's Man United, Man City. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's still <laughs> City. <laughs> Sooty. Oh, yeah, he's Sooty. Yeah. Not the last time he got in trouble for that sort of language either. <laughs> Oh, wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> dreadful, but wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I haven't ever jacked up this bad ever. No, I, <laughs> naughty, very naughty. Now, oh, that was last week. Uh, right, let's talk about Huddersfield. They managed to stop the rot with stop a confidence-boosting win over Bournemouth. It wasn't just a win, it was a confidence-boosting mm. win. A penis was seen. Yeah, a penis let's, was seen. Let's get to the real stuff. With apologies to Huddersfield, he put in a fantastic performance and all the Huddersfield <laughs> fans loved it and good for them, box ticked. Pete, you're the penis correspondent. <laughs> a penis was seen. Who was it? What was your impression? What can we learn from was it? Was it as well, big well, as yours? Well, I, I've, I've done some studies. I think we can discount the Jewish members of the squad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but would you kiss him on the hat? <laughs> <laughs> is the question. Who knows? Could, be, could it be anyone? Lovely little swing on it. A yeah. good size. Yeah. We had a good, we had a, we, had, we had a long discussion on the WhatsApp group. A good size. Yeah, I agree. Lovely little swing a, on there's it. There's a thigh, <laughs> thigh tattoo involved because the thing is, it's a thigh tattoo there, involved. Yeah, well, because well. no one knows who it is. I Surely it's the... really easy to oh, find right, out. Okay, yeah. Oh dear. It was it was absolutely fantastic to watch. Yeah. Good swing <laughs> to on. Great, watch. It was a great development over and over again. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe Huddersfield fans must be gutted that their um, their um, their four one win was overshadowed by one of their squad getting the old chap out. I think yeah, most yeah, people who wouldn't be on this show bit of showboating though. Yeah. You yeah. should do that more often. Yeah. Just like Get imagine your it, out. Yeah, no, at the, the end of the game, Newcastle should have just like done a lap of the pitch, Willy copter in. <laughs> I'm for that. Good. Yeah, indeed, yeah. But it... yeah, yeah. We all need a hustle, I suppose. Yeah. What a what a model pro. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of model pros, ah, I'm Paul, looking forward to this one. Paul Vesky Salido. Your he, man. He told uh, a story about Neil Warnock, which surfaced this week. And we crossed live to our Paul Pesci Salido. Look alike Marcus and man. <laughs> <laughs> well, old Paul, he said, uh, when they were both at Sheffield United, Warnock took the players on a team bonding weekend to Scarborough, as you do. Yeah, glamorous. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and, and Pesky Salido said that they went ten pin bowling, and Warnock convinced everyone to put ten pound in the pot with the winner taking all. You can imagine Warnock trying to get a bit of team spirit. Come on, come on. Have, we'll just have a tenner on It'll it. Ten is in pot. <laughs> ten is in ten pot. Ten is in pot, <laughs> and I'll get some pints of mild as well. Yeah, and we'll have a lovely time at the bowling. Yeah, winner takes all. I right. love bowling, do I? No one scratchings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, who's put tenner in the fruity then? <laughs> <laughs> so then, as Pesky Salido then went on to say, we, ag- we all agreed for some fun. Then Warnock pulled out his own bowling shoes in custom ball, shot 250 and took all our money. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think it was one of those um, resin-based balls with a, with a rose in the middle. With his yeah. name on it. Like yeah. a kingpin. Colin yeah. Wanker on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that is absolutely super. Colin Strike Wanker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads, you never get in a bowling match with me. Take all your money. I've made 150 quid here. <laughs> Who wants a pint? <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. yeah. His own shoes. Right, lads, should we begin now? Well, I love that he's <laughs> telegraphing that he's mugging them off as well and then going through with it. That's the... it's, it's like a Paul Newman-esque hustle. Yeah, yeah. It's massively. Inspirational. The same sort of hustle that Karen Brady did later on. <laughs> yeah. The I white said, I said moments <laughs> earlier, we all need a hustle, Peter. <laughs> yeah. And the football ramble seems to be ours. Right, ladies and gentlemen. He, he would, he would, uh, he's gone now, yeah, but he would, um, uh, Mike Ashley, just, just 
couldn't be asked. Just well, like, like, oh, 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 let's bit of, bit of credit because that was obviously a bit of turmoil at the club. So um, to t- to steady the ship, he brought in Joe Kinnear as interim manager. <laughs> Do you remember, again, that was another day. <laughs> Sorry, I was being serious for a moment. There. Yeah, I, I didn't realise... Uh, oh, the, that the, will, the roles have been reversed. Yeah. Oh, that will not be allowed. No. Uh, Why am I hosting this one? Pete, I saw a quote from um, Dennis Wise uh, when I was researching this show earlier, saying, and the headline was, Dennis Wise, Ashley is prepared to spend in January. Um, and I realized, this is no word of a lie. I talk about the search tools and Google and stuff. I realised that I hadn't done the search tools <laughs> at this point. And that quote was from the 18th of January 2018. Yeah, he's still, honestly, he's still, like, on, why he's is still on the why saying that? He's still on the PR roll for uh, Mike Ashley. Is it because he spent some time with that in deck in the jungle? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there was talk that the, the reason yeah. that um, Mike Ashley even knows Joe Kinnear is because they basically had ended up as drinking buddies. He's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, Joe's, right. Joe seems a good chap. It, he can steal the ship for a while. Yeah. Is it fair to say Joe Kinnear made an explosive start to life at Newcastle? Yeah. That press conference, he swore, I think 52 times was the uh, stat. He swore uh, 52 times in that press incredible. conference. It's incredible. The I'm audio not... of that exists, doesn't it? It's yeah, well worth you, you could listen to it. I'm not sure if he swore 52 times or he said the C word 52 yeah. times and there were other swear words his as well. Fir- his first words <laughs> in the press conference were, who's Simon Bird? You're a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Noel Hickman, you're fucking out of order. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's out of order. And, and the only reason for it was because the papers had mistakenly reported that they hadn't turned up because they hate Joe Kinnear when Joe Kinnear had actually given them a day off. Yeah. And that was and that's enough to get him going. <laughs> Mad. He's, he, 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 by the end of his tenure, he was only talking to Breitbart. He wouldn't, yeah. talk, <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't talk to any of the big boys. But yeah. Kinnear was such a relic as well, wasn't he? Like Even more so than Keegan. We couldn't believe our luck. Oh, so, remember? That was it was so weird. Got, it was where's stunning. Where's that come from? It was, yeah. it was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it, would be, it would be nice to see him uh, do very well. Now then, we move on to the uh, the main event from this whole podcast. <laughs> Luke was at Fran Park. <laughs> they lost 1-0 against Shrewsbury, which will please a uh, friend of the ramble, um, Murray James, of course. Yeah. Uh, Luke, uh, not a classic. Why did you want me to include this in the oh, record? Because there was a really funny moment. <laughs> There's a few funny, funny moments, as there always is. Um, one, uh, the referee missed a read blatant handball, and some, uh, one man got so uh, annoyed that he was uh, ejected. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what, what was it? He was swearing, or was he was he getting with his ten year old son? Good. Nice. <laughs> Imagine the sort of behaviour you have to exhibit to be kicked out, physically kicked out of Fratton Park <laughs> because of what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was good. Uh, but did his son go with him? Uh, yeah, he had to, didn't he? He could stand on his own, could he? Yeah. Well, he doesn't sound like the most responsible parent. Uh, so who knows? His dad was literally like, "Come on!" Oh, I see. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, but my uncle." Yeah. Uncle Tommy's here. But anyway, <laughs> Portsmouth weren't, weren't that good in the first half particularly and they went into the break 1-0 down. In the second half, they started playing really well. Uh, Kenny Jackett brought, uh, made a couple of changes yeah. and, and it worked. Really well. No, they did. They, it they didn't work, did it? No, at that point, I'm, I'm putting you in the context. Okay. That, at that point, okay. I was, I mean, I'm, I'm as pessimistic as they come and you guys know that. <laughs> but at that point, I thought we're, we're probably, not only are we going to eat class, we're probably going to win this game. Okay. Uh, we hit the crossbar, the yeah. keeper made two world-class saves, nailed on penalty, turned down. Anyway, Got to take your chances. But the point is, we were losing 1-0, and, but the feeling was quite good. And uh, Christian Burgess, who plays at the back for Portsmouth, he's a, he's, he's like a, he's a centre-back in League One, right? So yeah. he's, not, he's not silky, he's just a centre-back. Mm. And, but the feeling was quite good at the time because we were playing well. We were playing the ball out from the back, mm-hmm. right? Christian Burgess gets the ball, the striker's coming in to close him down, and he just nutmegs him. Lovely old Joe. It was a lovely, was a lovely nutmeg, right? <laughs> to the point that even though Portsmouth were losing, the fans went, hooray! Yeah. Apart from the one guy sat next to me who just got so pissed off and didn't do a nutmeg, he went, oh, don't try that again, you fucking giraffe. <laughs> 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 oh, it's brilliant! Love it's it, brilliant! Lovely. I couldn't laugh properly though because he was terrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very, very good. Okay. Anyway, we lost the game, so the, the joke's on us. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I thought you might enjoy that. The one. tactics work to a point. <laughs> I mean, I understand what he means in one sense, but he is overlooking the fine work that that football club yeah. has been and, and Roy, doing. Roy, Roy Keane now lives his life. Like, I'm not saying I don't agree with it, <laughs> but Roy Keane now lives his life um, like a man on a permanent wind-up of every other human being on the planet. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he? So Including you, himself. You take it with a pinch of salt, can't you? Yeah, really? I mean, it, it's over the top, certainly. The lang- the thing with Roy Keane is there's always violence in the language. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really <laughs> aggressive because... His words assault you. Yeah, yeah. What, what, he's, what he's doing is he, he's pointing out facts, but really violently. Yeah. Like, really aggressively just pointing out <laughs> facts. Like if Wikipedia hated you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's me. Have you seen my entry? <laughs> Ramble fans just changing it every time. Par- the, the, the only thing oh, is, you won't get more the, of that now. The thing, <laughs> the, the, 
<laughs> like, it's really hard to keep something on Wikipedia. I've not done it myself, but from what I've heard, it's quite difficult because people just are on it. As soon as you change something, there's, you know, thousands of people around the world checking up on the facts. The things that have been left in, that have been checked, <laughs> I was on a TV show with Gary, with, um, with Gascoigne, with Paul Gascoigne. Were you? Going fishing. No. <laughs> but according to Wikipedia, I've got an illegitimate but child in Japan. On Wikipedia, though. Yeah, but Pete, it's, people just think, oh, well, yeah, that's true. I'm but not yeah, saying it's Pete, not Brand Donaldson. Pete, but I've heard a, a thing that um, I think Luke's told me before. That there was some test that says Wikipedia is as accurate as like a normal encyclopedia. So yeah. are you absolutely sure <laughs> yeah. that none of these things are true? I, I saw, I saw a, a talk with a guy, like a scientist, I forget who it was, who said he was a particular um, expert in one strain of science and said he was asked to look at the Wikipedia page for that particular specialty that he had and just critically mark it. And he said like, it was it was incredibly accurate. It was oh, really, yeah, yeah, really yeah. good. I'm, I'm but, um, but, but Pete, the best Donald part of all Donaldson has done extra work. He once appeared as a walker in The Walking Dead. <laughs> Incorrect. Never done that, although I do look like but a zombie. Why are you bringing attention to this? <laughs> yeah. It's going to get ten times worse Only now. That's, he it likes work. it. Yeah. Got me age right, shitheads. <laughs> yeah, could have made you, could have made you 32, couldn't they? <laughs> I know. Mm. Unbelievable. What, what were we talking about, Marcus? Uh... Pete's chances of getting on Radio 1. Yeah. <laughs> You're too old, at that, mate. At that age, very slim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah. Very good. And I'll finish with uh, this one from Isaac Hose, who says, Isaac Hose, great name. Oh, he says, uh, finding out Kevin Keegan was born on Valentine's Day means everything else pales into comparison. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't Isaac Hose um, chef from South Park? That's uh, Isaac uh, Hayes. Hayes, yeah. yeah someone must have been messing close. with his Wikipedia. I'm, I'm pleased you actually knew that because I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. And Jim, are you looking forward to Arsenal having a weekend off? Yeah. Hence you having a weekend off, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Marcus, do you fancy uh, a couple of uh, uh, Wikipedia entries that, uh, that have been changed? What about? Uh, by Ramble fans, basically. Yeah, about on me? My Wikipedia. On, my, on my Wikipedia. Oh, OK. Um, apparently my nickname was the Sledgehammer of Eternal Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, that got wiped? That got wiped. That, that uh, you know, Wikipedia's uh, oh, these are the ones men that and women just sort of deleted Wikipedia's it. Wikipedia's editors, aka you, what? Yeah. That. Sledgehammer uh, of eternal Pete, justice. Pete went public about his yoga addiction, addiction in uh, 2017. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, Pete caused a nationwide stir in May 2017, where he proclaimed his top three Newcastle United signings to be. Uh, Gavash, uh, David Batty and Albert Luque. I actually quite like David Batty. David so. Batty was a yeah, good yeah, player yeah, for you. Uh, he speaks 14 Asian languages, has a Chinese wife and is the Emperor of Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Complicated that one politically, and, isn't it? And finally for now, um, I failed to graduate due to overdue library books. That one is actually true. <laughs> you see, yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> one, that one should have remained in there. I was about to say, you actually told me that. Yeah. You knobhead. There we go. Uh, yeah, Marcus. No, you are. No need for that. You're disrespecting your no, own education. He's just reading your Wikipedia, man. <laughs> Apparently you're a knobhead. <laughs> yeah, that's what it does. You see all the workings out at the end. Conclusion, knobhead. knobhead. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you type in knobhead in Wikipedia, it forwards to Pete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like oh, Google Images. Yeah. There we are. 40 worms. points. Treats himself to a worm for every point mm. they got in the Premier League. <laughs> Spaghetti worms. <laughs> yeah. Worms and meatballs. Worm bolognese. Oh, but before we talk about uh, Manchester City versus... Chelsea. Let's go to the emails with PTD. Yeah, just a quick couple to be honest, Marcus, because we have got an email special later on uh, this week, so look out for that. Keith from Texas says, hey gents, not sure if you got up on this uh, on the Brit broadcast, but the US broadcast of the Liverpool Newcastle game delivered my highlight of the weekend. Uh, Peter Drury commented that Rafa was putting on another layer against the cold, wise man that he is. Cut to two shirtless Newcastle fans making V signs and shouting indiscriminately. (laughs) Peter Drury then says, and those are Geordies. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Keith from Texas. Also, uh, Chris in Auckland. I do think police officers are as hapless as that and you can get away with crime. So he showed you Robocop. <laughs> yeah, Couldn't he fly in three? Oh, shut up, Pete. Oh, Marcus, come on. Fly. Let's go to the championship at the Old Farm Derby app in two very yeah. late goals. Norwich won Ipswich one, of course, was the result. Tim Closer missed a good chance earlier in the game. Made amends, though, didn't he? With that injury time winner. Mick McCarthy. <laughs> this is so good. A man who does not obey the public trust. <laughs> Marcus, tell them. I'll protect the innocent. Tell people, people listening who may not have seen this what Mick McCarthy, and you say he was accused of doing it. <laughs> He did it. He was doing it. <laughs> what did he do? Uh, he told his own fans to fuck off. <laughs> he celebrated a allegedly, goal. Allegedly. No, he celebrated a goal yeah. in their biggest game of their season <laughs> yep. by screaming fuck off to his own fans. No, even better than that, it was the fist going yeah. right fist in there. As well. going yeah. right, no, I would not say that's a fist pump. That was a that was an uppercut. That's going in there. That's, <laughs> right up the arse. Like, fuck that. you. <laughs> up the arse. <laughs> Explain that to people the... who pay my wages up to the wrist. 
<laughs> Pete, imagine you explain that to the director. I know what you're saying, Mick, but the fans are quite important. Mick, Mick, cal- cal- calm down, Mick. Calm uh, down, Mick. They can't hear you now. Stop saying it. I were, I were, I were, no, what I were doing was... I were, I were pretending I was fishing out some grass from a tractor, yeah. and it was a tribute to the match. Yeah. You can imagine the director saying that, and Mick McCarthy goes, no, I don't know what you're saying, but it's me against them. Fuck them. <laughs> and you. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a shame for Big Mick, because, of course, Ipswich scored on the 89th minute. And, I want my uh, man delivering a calf. <laughs> <laughs> like what a farmer would do, yeah? <laughs> oh... Manchester United, they're still in it. They are. But they're out of the Champions League. They also are. But, you know, <laughs> but, just, but just move on, Jim. I mean, it's not a big... It's good to see Ollie's isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Mourinho said, I don't want to make a drama out of it. We don't have time no, for that. No, we know you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the point. We all know you don't want to do that. Because you're usually so bad at that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. We don't have time for it. I, I think we do, yeah. Jose. Yeah. We'll find time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make room in our schedules, yeah. <laughs> well, he said, we have a match on Saturday. That's football. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, Nothing to see here apart from a humiliating home defeat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a well-deserved one as well, I think it's fair mm. to say, given the way they approach both games. He also said after the game um, that he's twice sat in that chair as manager of Porto and Real Madrid after knocking Man United out of the Champions League. So it's not a situation they're not used to. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's brilliant, isn't yeah. it? Real Madrid. Yeah. Well, Real Madrid won here. So, well, there's, there's so many layers to that as well, because what it's say, also saying, um, in addition to how ridiculous it is, it's also saying, <laughs> I've, I've lost, we've lost before, we'll lose again. Yeah. Oh, wait, we don't want to hear about that now. You should just be happy we go out of a group. Yeah. <laughs> That's essentially what he's saying. Let's it? remember some of my past achievements. <laughs> yeah. When I wasn't the manager, <laughs> you're that was specifically at your expense. Yeah. Look how lucky you are to have me. Yeah. Incredible. It's absolutely wonderful. I, I, I did, we did say that. Stop trying to bring him in. I'm talking about your fault. I'm talking about you. Now now that you are him, you're defending him. I know. (laughs) (laughs) I've become everything I hate. Uh, Hello to Callum. Hello, Callum. All right, Callum. Uh, Hello, lads. Uh, On the latest show, I was delighted to hear a mention of Kevin King's soccer circus. Mm. That oft forgotten relic of mid noughties football (laughs) patter. I love it how everyone calls it a soccer school, but with Keegan, it's a soccer circus. I know, yeah. What I like... No, I think it... Wasn't it called a soccer circus or something? No, it was. It was. That, that it was, was the name of it. Yeah. yeah. That genuinely... Yeah. Was, that's what I mean. Like, everyone else, it would be a soccer school. Growing up in Glasgow, I was about 14 uh, when a school friend invited me along to the soccer circus for a day out. It was fucking shit. <laughs> 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 We were the only people there, and the board staff let us go round twice extra for free. It makes it sound like it was an amusement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, no, I think like it was like train. an experience type yeah. thing. It wasn't like a Bobby Charlton type thing. Oh, was no. it not? Oh, it I think like it, was, a... it was a travelling like, <laughs> mini soccer theme park. What's Keegan yeah. involved? We talked about this years ago. Name on it, didn't oh. he? Take your head, mate. Kevin Keegan's football clusterfuck. Yeah. Give it it's a Google. fucking shit. Yeah. Give it a Google. Why are you um, firing me out of a cannon? As we were... As we were leaving, though, we noticed the great man himself exiting the office. Ah. So he didn't have to stick around. <laughs> he was clearly just a, a figurehead, promotional yeah. figurehead. But no, he puts the hours in. No. And that's oh, why yeah. Keggy oh, is brilliant. Yeah. Two people in that day. Yeah. <laughs> if, if my name's on the door, I really should be there every yeah. day. I should be checking fire exits. I'm not a lion tamer. Don't put me in the cage with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were the only people there, as I said, uh, and boss stuff. Let us go around twice extra for free. Uh, we approached Keggy tentatively. I, a lifelong Man City fan, like my dad, was wearing an all 5 six home shirt uh. we're talking barn we're talking Vassell we're talking Fowler uh, my friend was wearing a bright orange Valencia away shirt he'd gotten on holiday Keegan was initially very friendly but when I asked him to sign my city shirt he said I'm not fucking signing that it was the season after I left Oh, oh. Fair enough to be fair to Keegan no Turn, to swear. Oh. No turning, to swear. turning his attention briefly to my friend he pointed at the Valencia shirt and said what the fucking hell is that we were 14 <laughs> so <laughs> Keegan, he's gone off on one hasn't he <laughs> Um, yeah, we, he returned to my shirt, signing it reluctantly and commenting uh, commenting on how f- uh, filthy it was. Uh, hmm. Filthy? You want to give that a wash, kid? Maybe he's in a uh, bad mood after a recent pratfall. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I took my signed shirt home and immediately put it in a frame which would fall off the wall and smash it a few days later because, of course, it did. <laughs> yeah, apparently, you also took the Valencia shirt off the kid, washed it in his washing machine and it shrunk it. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, I lost touch with the school friend, uh, but I hope somewhere there's still an orange Valencia away shirt with a massive Kevin Keegan signature. Maybe he's listening to the show. sharpied on it. <laughs> Pete, maybe we can re... re uh, what's the word? A uh, reunion. Get them back together. Yeah. 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 I mean, the reunion islands. We, yeah. I mean, we must... Generation-wise, we must have a lot of listeners who went to that soccer circus. So do get in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone yeah. end up being a professional footballer? That's what I want to know. Uh, so thank From you. going to a Kevin Keegan soccer-themed <laughs> theme park. <laughs> 
It's like Mr. Blobby World, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the Soccer Circus, uh, close for So did anyone ever become a TV presenter by meeting Noel Edmund? <laughs> the Soccer Circus, close for a good eighth month later. So, oh, there we go. Oh. Get Callum. Uh, hello to... Get myself bedded in because I think it's a good chance. Has to be. Has but to I be. think it's a good chance he'll swap between Friday and Tuesday. Oh yeah, yeah I think I, he will. I, I, I think uh, what I would like to see, bearing in mind that realistically, I think he will. Uh, he, he will make a change on Friday as well. I just think whoever, just whoever does best in these, that's the goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just yeah. make a decision. But I said, but, but I, I, I said, and was rightly probably pilloried that um, we always kind of like get angry and get you know wound up about the goalkeeper. It's if you're worried about your goalkeeper, you're in trouble. But you Worry do still need ball. a goalkeeper. No, but, but there I'm, is not a... saying, I'm not saying don't bring a goalkeeper, what Luke. I think I'm making that very clear. You're saying it doesn't matter if you pick a shit one or not, which is you mad. Are. We're well, worried about They're them. all shit. They will all become shit because as soon as you put that fucking three lion shirt on, <laughs> you okay. become shit. This is why you were pilloried. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> what you've done there is you've made me look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> because about two minutes ago, I said, well done for being disciplined. Yeah. Well, okay. Pete, Pete, you're not only making yourself look bad. street, isn't it? Pete, and I, I can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, that will be on his gravestone. I'll that. tell you what. Yeah. Pete, my tr- coffee's full of syrup. <laughs> Let's drink. <laughs> Trust is a two-way street and I can't drive. <laughs> yeah. Don't even know what the signs mean. <laughs> the Pete Donaldson story. Yeah, mm. I've got a question for you, Pete, and for you, Jim. Um, sorry Stop to exc- asking him questions. Sorry to exclude you, Marcus, but you'll see one. <laughs> do you two have any love, as I do, for the fact that Marcus has referred uh, to Ronaldo Koeman in the running order? Uh, <laughs> oh. I missed that. That, that, little finger, that, little, that little finger stretching I'd say from the D to the O. Yeah. He yeah. loves his Twitter so much, you want to compare him to Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I think he made the donation, but he wouldn't wear the shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's that's you're right because you reminded me there. Sheffield United beat West Ham three nil in the they running. Did. In they the did. running, and yeah, I th- yeah. I think Warnock probably thought, oh, ah, we've got a chance. Here. Safe as houses. But um, it's so funny because into do you guys remember just to, on the on the Tevis thing and the Warnock? Because because really, what we're talking about here, it was a great escape from West Ham as well. It was, yeah, with two players that were illegally bought. <laughs> uh, yeah. But but. but what we're talking about here, really, a, a, a bit, a big facet of this is this Warnock um, at the at the at the um, at the sort of forefront of, of ramming this unfair thing yeah. through. Because no other, I mean, Charlton Athletic were also relegated. They didn't complain, as far as I know. I mean, maybe they did, but it mm. wasn't. There wasn't as much made of it. But do you guys remember in 2011 when Carlos Tevez had a bust up with Roberto Mancini in a Champions League game in mm. what, against Bayern? And uh, he refused to come. Well, they said he refused to come on. Yeah. And he later said, no, I refuse to warm up. Mancini came over to me. I can't remember who it was against. It was away from home. It was Bayern, I think. Right. Manchi- you, if you remember, Mancini goes over no, to I remember him it very well, and yeah. says, warm up. And he says, no, no, no. I'm war-. He said, I said, oh, I'm already There's warmed up. There's two differing accounts. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But the funny thing is, that, that was not the point. The point is, at that point, Neil Warnock was managing QPR, right? Not involved. Not involved in the Champions <laughs> League. Yeah. No, no need to. You know, if you get asked about that in a press conference, you, I'm, I'm here yeah. to talk about Queen's Park Rangers. If he was managing Bayern Munich, Munich, it might yeah, have been relevant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the sooner he leaves the country, the better. <laughs> 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 oh, he's like uh, Terry Butcher's, uh, uh, you know, always going on about Maradona yeah, in 86. Yeah. Warnock will keep going about this. Oh, and this, this quote is brilliant as well. I can't see it being sorted by him staying. Two weeks ban is a disgrace. <laughs> Within a few months, he'll be kissing another badge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Warnock wasn't, cannot let it go. Yeah, it oh, you're having that, Jim. Oh, two, in another it. two weeks, he'll be kissing another oh, badge. Oh, I'm t- this is music to my ears. I'm Team Warnock on this. So, yeah, add some words for Richard Scudamore as well. Oh, yeah. This is Warnock. I'd love to get him in a room on my own for an hour. <laughs> no holds barred. <laughs> <laughs> if it was any other club, Scudamore would have made sure the facts came out. I find it amazing that he has kept his job. If it had been a big club, the truth would come out earlier and it would have been sorted. Yeah. I'd batter him all around that room, I tell yeah. you. I love punching, do yeah. I? <laughs> He's a good dead man. <laughs> It makes a good cop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, listen, Sheffield Rob, United. if you want to... Years for one to come along, <laughs> you get four or five years. If, unless I read this wrong, and forgive me if I have, but Jose Mourinho caused a bit of uh, a shock in the room when he gave Manager's Player of the Year award to Scott McTominay. This is brilliant. Yeah, it's incredible. That is, <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. It's, it's that. such a murk, isn't it? It really it's is. Brilliant. I, I wonder how McTominay feels about all this. Because Do you know does what? he take it at face value or does he think, I'm being used as a, a weird example Let, here? Let's be honest. It's the closest thing Mourinho can do to giving himself the award. Yeah. <laughs> probably, it is, isn't it? It's five Premier League starts this season. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, is that disrespectful yeah. to... Uh, Played a total of 640 minutes yeah. in, all, in all composition. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I've read that right that he gave him the yeah. award. No, sorry, that's in Premier League and Champions League competitions. I saw, I saw a quote from him about this saying that um, you know, he doesn't look at players and you know young players and senior players. He just looks at um, just looks at players. And he said, uh, "And I love this kid." It's like, well, hang on, <laughs> like, <where? laughs> they're all kids to him. Yeah. The other players that they need to step up. Do you think he? Yeah, was... I love it how he's just politicised. What's supposed yeah. to be quite a nice event. Do you yeah. think that he was more or less entertaining as Manchester United manager at the at the Manchester United end of season awards than Louis Van Gaal was? Never at that time. No. Is it a lady with the saxophone? <laughs> The saxophone, they're never going to beat that. <laughs> Give a big applause! Yeah, before you move on to Van Gaal, and I don't want to get in your way. <laughs> I, I really don't. Um, five Premier League starts for McTominay. Yeah, it is, <laughs> that is so funny, isn't it? It's like he's only just realised he can use academy players. <laughs> yeah, he got really carried away. Yeah, well, there we are. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it is worth remembering. One, one of those games, can I just say, of the five Premier League starts... Is it, was the one against Crystal Palace the one where he had to come off at half time because they were 2 0 down? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I they think... won that 3 2. I mean, Matic scored the winner, didn't he? Matic got a goal of the season for. If it's the same Crystal Palace match we're talking about. Yeah, they were 2 0 down at half time. Matic scored and the they winner. They came back and 1 3 2. Yeah, that's right. No, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure McTominay got dragged in that I game. I can't remember. So basically, one of the five, and there's only five that he started, <laughs> 20% of those games, he got, he got the hook at half time because his team were two and then against Crystal Palace and they ended up winning 3 2. Player of the year, that. Yeah. That's player of the year material for me. Unquestionably. Five Premier League stars. Unbelievable. It's only five more than you. You've got, you got, you got to think about what Romelu Lukaku thinks of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Little naughty boy. As you were at Newcastle for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Little naughty boy. Uh, James Hill just wanted to make a comment about um, the fact that he's living in Dubai the past couple of years. He's uh, dealing with uh, Keith and Gray out on Middle East TV. Oh, Apparently, uh, this, new, um, th- this new thing they're really annoyed about, modern football and nonsense, is to get angry about uh, the Stoke Palace match where... Um, Ryan Shawcross led the team out on the pitch. It was noticed by Keys that some of the mascots were children of the players. I've not noticed this end of season tradition before because it is completely irrelevant and dismissed it immediately as a harmless talk and the kids have probably been looking forward to for a couple of weeks. But not Keys. He was actually in- incensed that anyone in the Stoke team or their spawn should ever consider jo- enjoying the occasion for what was literally five minutes. According to Keys, there is a big difference between holding your own child's hand before a match instead of the hand of a child you don't know. Uh, after the match, uh, Ke- Keys was adamant... <laughs> The, the, the fact that some of the players walked out with their kids contributed to the defeat and therefore ultimately gave them relegation because they had the audacity to enjoy the match. Richard Key's there, a man who literally had sex with his daughter's friend. <laughs> <laughs> happened. It yep. happened. Martin Nash. Here's an eye like the weekend. Jim's Dunn and Jimmy Jim, Dunn. Pete, Jim and Mark oh, have gone. They've so gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Martin, I don't like the intensity. It's the Luke Pichot. Yeah. Uh, Martin Nash has uh, highlight of the weekend was uh, James Dunn and Jimmy. D- Who knows that in, we're in between the club season and the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about right said Fred, <laughs> giving them the kudos that perhaps they didn't receive fully no. in the nineties, um, but they have now, so mm. we can kick on. Yeah. Uh, who'd like to hear about me meeting Kevin Keegan? Literally yes. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your first point of order? <laughs> Who would like to hear about me meeting Kevin Keegan? Did um, you treat him with a bit more respect than you usually bloody do, Marcus Speller? I know, one of my favourite footballers. Oh, Pete, I reckon managers. it was one of the worst displays of two faces you've yeah, ever seen. Yeah. It was really nice to him. Yeah. Iago Disgusting. style levels of two faced turncoatery. No, I have. I look. Do I respect Kevin Keegan and <laughs> Arsenal fan TV? I respect one of those things, yeah. and it's Kevin Keegan. Um, <laughs> No, I just find a few things rather amusing about the man of what's happened. Like, to like him. what? Well, let's well, have some highlights. We we know all this. What was it like to actually meet him? <laughs> he's genuinely a lovely man. He's exactly as you would imagine. People love that man as well, and rightly so. Yeah. I have to say though, uh, no sooner had he walked into the room uh, and and he shakes everybody's hands and very congenial, very lovely. He sat down. And I'm not joking. The first story he tells. No, I don't know whether this is. Uh, a, a recent thing, or back in the day when he was playing in Liverpool, but he, for some reason, he told some story. Obviously, theft is not funny, etc., and so on. But he told a story about his car radio getting nicked when he was in Liverpool. Did he? <laughs> that was his opening thing. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't, Incredible. 
Well, that was his anecdote. I had my car stereo <laughs> stolen in the place where everyone says car stereos get stolen. Yeah, right, so okay. uh, I think it was probably from yesteryear. But, um, <clears throat> okay. but there we are. There but we a go. lovely man, nonetheless. They're, they're not removable anymore, surely, are they, Marcus? I've no they idea. They probably are yeah. if you're Kevin Keegan. <laughs> I, I, fit in, I fit in my own it's car dissolved. stereo and it's definitely not removable, so I can yeah. concur it's not. Okay. There we are. But a lovely chap, genuinely. Mm. Very, very lovely. Still thinks, a meeting of minds. Still yeah. thinks penalties are a lottery, though. Yeah. Despite mm. the overwhelming well, we'll, evidence we'll, we'll, myself and well, others suggested. Uh, you never played the game. Yeah. So, we'll right. also find out about that in the summer, I expect. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. He did admit that uh, when he took England to Euro 2000, that um, they had these ideas in place, and then when they tried to implement them and they didn't quite work, they didn't have much of a plan to back that up. Right. right. You know, and I Doesn't thought... sound like Kevin Keegan's <laughs> managerial <laughs> career at all. Well, well, right, Kevin, what are we going to do next? Well, I thought that was work. So, <laughs> yeah. anyone got any ideas? Because I genuinely thought that was going to work. Tino's turned up to the match drunk. Let's play with <laughs> yeah. Barry Venison in the role. <laughs> yeah. what, what's the tactical style? Hope, mainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're playing a hope, hope too. <laughs> the force of my charisma and goodwill. Yeah. Oh, but which, England can, look, which can get you pretty far. They can do. When you're Kevin Keegan. England look like they've got a plan on the Southgate, don't they? So there is an angle here for Morocco, who I think are a better team than people think. I, I saw so, Morocco, Iran through the group. I actually think it's... <laughs> well, it was Uruguay and Costa Rica in 2014. That's true, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. But I'm not having... Spain in disarray is still way more organised than everyone. They'll still be England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, They'll still get out the group. I think, yeah. I think it's actually quite a nice group, that one. I think that people might think that Portugal and Spain might breeze it. And they might. What's, what's the, the party group is Group H, though, isn't it? Japan, Senegal... Colombia, Columbia, Poland. Oh, Beautiful. Lovely. Beautiful. Just, yeah, that's nice. That's a lot of fun. That is nice. Yeah, Hang on a minute. Breaking news. Julian Le Pettigree has been sacked one day before the World Cup starts. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Disarray. Yeah. There is disarray. Oh, wow. Spain are doing a France. Yes. England have got a chip. No, no, yeah. don't go that far. They're on the other side of the draw. doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> England have got a ch- chips. Do you want to send some chips? Oh Brought by the BBC. The Spanish Football Federation have confirmed they've sacked Julian Le Pettigree as manager just over 24 hours before the World Cup begins. We'll that cover has, that that's why we're recording in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> That is mad. That is insane. Surely you've got to get someone in who's got World Cup experience, who knows how to take a team, and it's called Sven Goran Eriksson. <laughs> Imagine if they got Sven in. <laughs> who are they going to get in? Like, it's got to be him, isn't it? Zidane. Still They're getting game. Zidane Imagine in. Imagine they got Zizou in. Oh, imagine. Oh, oh, from Champions oh, League winning to World Cup <laughs> winner. Um, All he does is win. Far be it for me to dampen the excitement, but they'll probably give it to the assistant. Yeah. It's one day before <laughs> yeah. the World Cup starts. Piss off, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> Right off. What about Pe- Del Bosco? Get him back. Get What's he Pepin doing for the summer? Get Being it. horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. See well, the fella. Uh, was it Camacho with the sweaty armpits? Yeah. Two thousand and two. Yeah. It's great that it's not us having this to deal with, isn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> give it a couple Come more days. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> My giddy aunt. I didn't care. <laughs> Paul Pogba had another good game. <laughs> he did. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's exactly my point. Yeah, Marine, Marine. Right. And uh, I'm trying to think. Who else? Wait, Wayne Rooney has moved twice, and now there's a Wayne Rooney day. I've, 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 I've personally yeah. enjoyed. I've personally David De Gea, though. David De Gea. True. Oh, yeah. I've personally enjoyed. Let's call it outfield players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the caveat with goalkeeper. I've personally enjoyed every single Mourinho player in the first game of the World Cup emerge out of the tunnel like someone who's been kept in a basement for five years. What is this beautiful Rub- Rubbing their eyes, looking at a football like it's been like like a caveman discovering fire, <laughs> yeah, like poking yeah, it, yeah. and then being brilliant. Eating a dragonfly. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> that was not. amazing, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> that was just so grim. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's because he's got his gloves on? He's just got to gob it out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's so grim. Like when sometimes a goalkeeper gets a defender over to do his shoelaces. Yeah. Defender jogs over, what do you need? Shoelaces, it? Dragonfly. <laughs> 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 Protein. We all need protein. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not know think that if you if you played under Santa slap on the bum? Where's me thing? Come on. When they're going for the river. Lord. Yeah. Pete, it's before back. we just no. say <laughs> My nickname Stop. No, go on. How does that work? Because you didn't have yeah, a guess that you, Yeah, you've got a guess. Yeah, you, you said stop. You've got a guess. You can't tell you anymore. No, I can say. No, you can't tell you anymore the clue. You've got a guess. Kaladze. Incorrect. Yeah, I didn't think it was. <laughs> That's why I said get on with it. Carry on, PC. my nickname is. It's the last clue. My nickname. So Mark is out of the game. My no, nickname, that's no, I'm not. Yeah, because you've had a guess on the clue. Clue. You didn't listen to you the clue. You can't have another guess on the clue. It. That's why I said carry on, and then you said no, you got a guess. You can't stop it. And that I'd only started the next clue, Mark. Carry on, Pete. You're listen, in charge. Sorry, Mark. That's Paul. <laughs> my nickname is El Grinta. I don't know anyway. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, have you all struck out? Be, yeah. well, this is rare, isn't it? I'm not it? allowed to know. No, Marcus, all right, what would no, you no, have no. said? What would you have said then, Marcus? Barry Grintles. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Grintles. 
It's not Barry Glintle's mask. <laughs> it's Christian Panucci. Oh, hey. The true Johnny, yeah. here you go. <laughs> Big Johnny. Have we not got homes to go to? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? I work at Holland and Barrett, showing off my muscles and selling creatine powder to papers. Does he? Is that what he does? 